if camera can adapt and be quick on their feet, then we also need to do the same I thing. Agree. And this allows me to, at a moment's notice, be ready to go. More things have probably been broken just in transporting than an, an actual on-set use. My thought process has always been like, get the gear, build the cart for the shows that you want. Hello, welcome back to another Ursa exclusive. This time we're here with Amanda Biggs. Thank you for being here. Of course, yeah, and welcome <laughs> to my garage. So excited. We've been trying to get her on for a while, so we're thrilled. <laughs> I had to be convinced to be in front of a camera, yes. <laughs> Thank God we convinced her. We're gonna go through her cart, follow cart, and something a little extra special. It's kind of like a, what would you call it? Like a I mean, I call it stand mode. Stand mode yeah, cart. Yeah, when I'm in Love stand it. mode, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Can't wait to show you guys. Let's go. Originally hailing from North Carolina, Amanda Beggs has been a sound mixer in Los Angeles for over a decade. Since moving to California, Beggs became one of the youngest women to earn membership in the prestigious Cinema Audio Society and has worked on numerous projects with powerhouse indie directors like Greta Gerwig, Gia Coppola, and Mike Mills. In addition to feature films, Amanda has also worked on episodic television such as Amazon's The Last Tycoon, FX's Legion, and HBO's Lovecraft Country. In this video, we comb through her beast of an audio kit to find out how she captures clean, beautiful sound anywhere the job takes her. I don't know where to start. <laughs> I have become a big Kantar fan after looking through Defender's setup. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did a really nice job. I think in general, I think we're just seeing more of them yeah. now. We see more people using them. I think Why there do you was think a that is? big influx. I mean, just this is just based on personal sort of like, you know, experience of other mixers that I know all made the switch within the past few years. So I don't know, just sort of, I guess, maybe it's, it's new territory. It's, yeah, it's something's in the air. We're all yeah. feeling like switching to Kantar. Everyone's but yeah. catching the purple fever. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Although you'll see that I did away with most of the purple. Everywhere that I could, I, I got like rid of the purple. I like you did the gray. Yeah, that looks yep. really nice. Yeah. And I think one of the things you said about this is it's so highly customizable that like if a Kantar user sits down at another Kantar user station, they might not know exactly what to do. Yep. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the advantages of having a digital, um, you know, setup. I mean, I forayed into that a little bit. My, my board before this was the Yamaha O1V, and that also is a digital, not an analog board. So all of your internal routing, um, how you send, you know, to aux tracks versus direct yeah. outs you yeah. know, buses, all of that is just done internally. There's no plugging this input into this, right. you know, the, the analog, you know, it doesn't, doesn't exist on that board. It's fully digital. It's the, I used the Dante card in it and would yeah. go into my 970s. And so that sort of gave me a look into how easy and how, how great it is just yeah. to be able to change a lot things. more options. Yeah, without having to stand up and in the back of the card be like, oh, right. actually, I want this <laughs> input to go into this track. It's like now it's just something in the menu. And so the Kantar also just allows you countless options for how you route things, how you're sending things out. Yeah. Um, you can create unique, um, you know, mixes for each, you know, for, there's eight line out outputs and you can create a you know a, a unique mix for each one of those um, that cool. can be changed very easily um, so yeah it's just it's really versatile just because of the nature of how it was designed that yeah. it is a digital it's a, interface it's such a compact setup too and you pointed out something that I didn't know about this you know when I when I pulled out the machine itself the XLRs are five pin because they're some of them are yeah some okay. of them are there are there's a couple three pin but some of them are five pin because they're putting essentially two inputs into mm. the one physical uh, connector and so I think it's some of the line inputs, I believe, are five pin. No, right. don't want to get this wrong. But um, but okay, yeah, but there are but there are some. Yeah, there are there are there are some. So which is that's how they're saving space essentially, yeah. um, because there are only so many analog inputs on the Absolutely. X3 as far as mic and line inputs. But then there are also there's AES. Uh, inputs as well. There's digital inputs as well. Again, a custom cable because everything about everything, everything is about Kantar is custom. <laughs> yes, yeah, no off-the-shelf uh, cables or, or accessories. Yeah, this it is seems the top like. shelf mixer here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> custom everything. I decided because the the format for my cart is essentially it's a case like a road case mm -hmm. that sits on a uh, base. So the case is removable from that base. The, my thought process behind this versus a uh, it's a heavy, I mean, because it is a heavier cart. Based on what it's made of, it's going to weigh more than maybe a case that's, uh, a cart that's more open air. Um, I mean, if you've seen Devendra's, Devendra's is more the four posts. He has removable right, sides right. on it, and then it's rack, you know, there's um, rack ears in it, but, um, or rack rail, sorry, inside of his cart. And why did you go with this this type of model? For me, I've, I 
have worked on some, out, I've worked on a lot of, not a lot, but a good amount of out of town jobs. Mm. And so when you're shipping your gear, my thought is you want it to be as protected as possible. That's a really These good These are point. road cases that are built by a company that does a lot of like music. Touring. I mean, I think everyone knows yeah. SKB is the one company, but these are all custom. And wow. I like that they're made out of wood versus SKB being plastic. Are they? Interesting. Because it's wood, I can drill into it and add hooks. I can add accessories. Yeah. I can I can do whatever I want to it. Um, but this this company I've been really happy with. Um, they do custom work. They're based in Los Angeles, so it's just a matter of me either drawing something up or calling the guy on the phone, putting together, you know, describing what I want, and yeah. within a week, it's built and ready to go, That's ready for me to pick really up. That's a really good turnaround. Yeah, time. they're they're really phenomenal. It's oh. encore uh, cases. Um, encore cases. They're really really phenomenal. I've been very happy with it. But my older one was a little bit shorter. It was four less uh, rack spaces, and I kept my monitors in a separate case that kind of mm. mounted on top. I decided I needed a few more rack spaces, and so my next one was like, okay, well. How do I want to design it? So this one was the second, you know, sort of iteration of the case, and I'm really happy with this case. So for me, swapping out um, just because I was swapping my gear didn't mean I necessarily needed a new case. Yeah. So that this build, um, this case was like ready to go for the Cantar. I mean, another thing, it again added bulk and weight, but the. The way that I had this design is this is Encore does a thing called an air rack system. Mm -hmm. So you can notice that the the rack rails themselves are not flush up against the mm. inside of the case. There's about like an inch and a half, like almost two inch spacers around the whole thing. So the rack, mm. the internal part of the case, the rack rails themselves is sort of floating, so to speak, inside of this case itself. And what that does is essentially it's like shock absorption. Yeah. So great when you're going over bumpy terrain. If you do kind of hit a big bump, I mean, the gear kind of has that protection. But also, um, it really withstood exactly what it was designed to do, is that when my gear was coming back from a show that I did in Chicago, mm -hmm. when I picked up my, when I received, you know, my cart back um, from the shipper, when I opened up the, the lids of the case, I noticed that both of my, you know, rack rails were shaped like this. Oh my God. My guess is that it was picked up with a forklift and then dropped onto the ground or set down with enough force that the rack rails themselves bowed under the, the weight of it hitting the ground so forcibly. Oh Every single piece of gear inside was completely fine. Um, and what's kind of great about it, because it is the two separate pieces, um, we actually ran into a situation on a show I just did where we were a second story in a building and the power went out, which meant the elevators didn't work <sighs> anymore. So, and so I was literally asked, I was like, hey, can you carry your cart? <laughs> <laughs> well, a couple of us can carry it. <laughs> Luckily, the grips, you know, built us a ramp with a winch and, you oh. know, because it was not just the sound card, it was video, it was everyone needed to get their gear down. But the fact that I can separate this into two pieces, I mean, that base is welded steel. It's heavy. Wow. So that's a bulk of the weight right there. So the fact that I can just separate them, two man this down a flight of stairs, yep. come back and get the base. I mean, there, there's just a versatility to it because it does have the ability to separate and didn't have to rebuild the base when I got a new case because it's the same dimension. So it allows oh, me right. to kind of grow without having to do a f brand new fresh build every single time I want to change things about the cart. So it was the same company that you went with then? Yep, my, both, all of my cases have been made by Encore and then the base and my follow cart are both made um, by Robert at uh, Studio Carts is his company. But, and I um, see you yeah. have some lovely Matthews stands going on back yeah, there. Yeah, just some C-stand risers on the back curious. for my antenna mass, uh, for my antennas, so that obviously yeah. can give, and it's a full-sized C-stand mass. They are removable, which means that if we need to remote our antennas and get them closer to set if I'm too far away, I have a set of just C-stand legs that are in my follow cart, so just pop off that c stand riser, put it on the legs, walk it out. No Brilliant. need to hunt down the grip department, yeah. ask for a stand, and then they inevitably take that stand back yeah. to the sound, the sound very clearly. Yes, <laughs> on the legs as well. It's uh, very clearly marked as sound. And this, the yes. welding on the back too is just so beautiful. I mean, I'm Robert is is great, and the best part about you know working with someone locally too is that I can go in with ideas. Yeah, he can come up with ideas of his own. We you know do a prototype before I ever you know before anything is actually made. And so it's it's nice because it, he's come up with ideas, things that I hadn't thought of mm. because Studio Cart's main business, well, they do make sound carts, but I would say their biggest business is building out grip and electric trucks, like gutting a, a semi and putting in shelving, putting in all of that. He's even built out like vans for video, you know, video wow. vans and whatnot. So his main business would definitely be more grip and electric, grip carts, uh, set lighting carts, even prop carts. So what's cool about that is, is that he comes to it with different ideas because he's not necessarily locked into like, this is what sound people want and do. Yeah. It's like, let's say we need to lift the cart. I mean, obviously it's heavy, but 
Oh, wow. And you can So this is borrowing there. from, I mean, this is literally, this is how you pick up dollies, how yeah. you pick up the dolly on set. They have these bars wow. that click into the dolly. That's how you lift them. And so this was his idea was to make them, you know, incorporate them into the cart and hide them so they get put that's away. That's brilliant. I love that. Something that I wouldn't necessarily yeah. have thought of, but because he's got that grip and electric kind yeah. of mindset, he was like, oh, well, this is how we pick it. Dollies are heavy. Like, how do we pick them up? The same thing. Um, the brake that's on it is the same sort of foot pedal brake right that you here. see on, on uh, grip and electric set carts mm. because those carts are heavy. And yep. if I'm parked on a hill, I want to trust that my brake is going to hold, exactly. not have a caster with a little, exactly. you know, lightweight brake on it. My thought process has always been like, get the gear, build the cart for the shows that you want to yeah. be prepared for that. Because if I book a movie, I mean, granted, I'll, I'll rebuild stuff if a show comes along sure. and all of a sudden it's like, oh, on this show we're doing a ton of beach work. Okay, what do I need to do to prepare my gear for that? Obviously, in between each show, there's prep that happens. Yeah. But in general, the overall plan was, okay, it needs to be shippable. It needs to be able to withstand even just living on a camera truck or a sound trailer. I mean, these carts go through wear and tear. And so my thought was, yeah, for longevity and protect the gear. So, yeah, I mean, I've, there's definitely lighter weight carts that exist out there. Um, but this one, I'm so confident. If I got to push and it's raining and I have to push to the truck, I just button this thing up and I push it to the truck. I don't need to worry about, you know, oh, quick, throw a bag it. No, you're pushing with a bag it and the bag it's getting caught in the wheels and all the like fun that is like working in the rain. <laughs> but uh, it's just, it's just, you know, thoughts like, you know, things like that that I've picked up over, you know, doing this, you know, for as long as I have. It's just like, oh, you know what's frustrating? Putting a bag it on the car to move it. How can I avoid that fully sealable case? You know, I mean, Amazing. so... Uh, but and the thing is, also, I push this cart. My utility doesn't push it. My boom up doesn't push it. It's my cart, my responsibility. I push this cart. So if I'm okay with the weight, then I'm the only one who yeah, has to you be. Look okay. yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, no, but it's, it's one of those things too. I wouldn't, you know, I don't want to ask anyone to deal with something that I've designed for my own, you know, comfort. So, but yeah, I take. That's great. This is my cart. I push it around. I feel like everything. <laughs> that I'm, I've seen so far looks pretty self-explanatory, but there's one feature over here yes. now. Is this for the crew members who've been bad? <laughs> I know, right? I know. <laughs> no, those are, those are like classic Home Depot Husky cable straps. They can hold like oh, super heavy. Okay. So my antenna cable or my stinger and whatnot, hang them on those. <laughs> What's great is then they're removable because this is just L-Track. Uh -huh, so yeah. you can add a bunch of, you know, more of these like, to it and I can hook. So these, I mean, these are obviously Fernando Muga. A lot of people use his stuff. Uh, these panels, I think have become super, super popular because because it is a way to protect the gear from dust and, and, and whatnot, but... But you don't always know, need like, another yeah. hard layer. Exactly, yeah. and that's more weight, too, so this does cut down on the weight. Um, so we'll move those that's out of the way. Gorgeous, look at that. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. But so power so, at the bottom, yeah, which all, you know, power cables. I do still keep my inverter, which was... That's a holdover from when I had to power my Yamaha O1V because that's an AC-powered board, so I did need an inverter. Yeah. I kept it because... Uh, I still run my, um, my, how I charge my laptop, which is through this Thunderbolt, mm -hmm. uh, dock that requires 24 volt. And so mm -hmm. that needs a little bit more power. And then the speaker that I use is also 24 volt. So I have my Furman up here. I have a power conditioner that's plugged into the inverter. So that way so I can still, still plug in things that are, yeah, yeah. So, so things that require AC power are, or more so than what the Zeus can output. Um, the inverter is so great, and because it's one of those things like, yeah, it's a couple pounds, but to me it doesn't necessarily what matter. What difference, right? After yeah. all, adding all this other weight yeah. for, that's for all yeah. the other features. And it is, the great part is it is powered through the Zeus, mm -hmm. so it's not like when I show up in the morning, I need to get a hard line of AC power to be able to use my speaker or be able to charge my laptop. It, everything is running through the, the Zeus, which right. I'm so, so, so happy with. I, I had a neon life prior to this. Oh, really? And I'm very happy with the Zeus. Well, fully self-contained, how many hours can you get out of this? That's what's great about the Kantar, is it draws a lot less power. Really? The, the <laughs> Yamaha, the O1V, that, that was power hungry for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I think probably my cart was probably pulling maybe 13, 14 amps when I had the O1V in play in the, in the 970s. Now I think we average, it's probably like six amps. So oh, almost, nice. almost cut, in, yeah, cut in half my, my power usage. And um, the great part about the Zeus is that you can daisy chain the Pelican Life batteries that Ron also oh, makes. Yeah. You can plug those in. So there's an internal battery in the Zeus. But then, but then I've also got three of those Pelican Life batteries. Oh, so nice. theoretically I could do a whole day on battery. And they just have to charge everything up overnight. 
Yeah, and you do a lot of different locations. Like you were saying, you can be in a in a cave in Thailand, mm -hmm. out in a field. I mean, there's yep. really, there is some situations yeah. Yeah. where you would have to be contained. Yep, and I mean, as a member of the sound department, I don't ever want to be the reason that they're bringing out a putt-putt generator. <laughs> exactly. Um, especially if camera can run off of battery, if let's yeah. say the monitors for video are running off of battery, I certainly don't want to be the reason they're bringing out a noisy putt-putt generator. Totally understand. So, being reli you know, self-reliant was important to me, and the Cantor does make that easier just because, in general, it just pulls less power yeah. than an AC-powered board. But This is lovely. What do you yeah. use the laptop for, mainly? So just laptop, wireless, wireless designer, designer okay. wireless designer. I love mm -hmm. that you have the new iPad for sides there. It's so nice to not have to rifle through paper. Well, just Always. spending 15 minutes every morning <laughs> highlighting every character, cutting and taping together yeah. sides to make them all be one sheet. I mean, it's, it is, is nice so switching nice. to to this app, yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, what app is that you're using? Scriptation. Scriptation. Seems to be the go-to one that a lot of people are oh, using. So. look into that. Um, but, uh, yeah. Well, do you want to just well, run through what's on the top? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, because yeah. um, I was at my, because I do know that the card itself is, you know, slightly more heavy and, and bulkier maybe than, than some other builds, my goal is to streamline everything on the inside as mm, much as possible. Yeah. So there was a lot of thought, like, put into making sure there's not, you know, an excess of cable or, or things that don't need to be there. Um, and so I downsized, because I, I mean, I sit in close range, so I don't necessarily need a giant monitor. Mm -hmm. So I switched, I used to have the Blackmagic uh, Smart View Duo, which were the two monitors that take mm -hmm. up three rack spaces. So when I switched to this TV Logic, I now get three monitors, because so many shows are A, B, and C cam. Totally. Uh, and then also they just take up two rack spaces, which for my purposes, that is big enough. I don't need, I'm not looking for every little imperfection in the right. frame like maybe, you know, a camera person would be. I just need to, is the boom getting close to the line? Are we seeing a wire? Those kind of things, which I, I can and pick up And this has been that. enough for you for that? This has been perfect. That's yeah, I'm great. really, yeah, very happy with that. Uh, and then obviously, so my wireless, I'm Lectro, um, and two of the old school venues have one of the new ones. Um, so that's, you know, 18 channels of wireless, which wow. more than enough. Do you um, do large track counts often? It depends. Um, there's certainly, every show I've ever done, there's usually like that one day where it's like, yeah, we've got, you know, 12 or 14 cats. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've never done a full show where it's every day wiring 12, wiring 12. I mean, obviously those, those shows exist. I've just been fortunate that it's, you know, for those few days in which you need this high, yeah, you know, this equipped. this amount. Not to mention, we don't just use wires on actors, we use them as plant, plant mics. mics. And exactly. so this gives you, say you're doing a giant wide shot and I want to drop five or six plant mics, yeah. I have the ability to do that. So, nice. um, so it's not even necessarily miking up people every time. The other thing too is in pointing out about streamlining, mm -hmm. one of the things I did um, is for this build is that I, I have everything, so that's my card reader up front, but everything essentially is running through a Thunderbolt 3 dock in the mm. back of the cart. That's one of the things that's powering off of my Furman because it does require 24 volts, but it both powers the laptop, so it charges my laptop, and then through that same cable, just single cable, card reader, I have an external drive back there, like a you know drive to be able to drop yeah. everything onto so I'm not letting things live on my laptop, like files at the end right. of the day. Yeah. Um, I can, it's for music playback, there's a USB interface back there mm -hmm. for, for running music through. Um, and then my all three of my venues plug into it for wireless designer. So it's literally everything that goes into my laptop just through one cable. Oh, so great. that was the sort of nature of like streamlining things yeah. versus having to have like a multitude of, of things. This just makes it morning, one cable, ready to go. You know, wireless designer, running wireless designer, just pop my, you know, pull my SD card out of here, pop it right in there, mm -hmm. hand it off to the loader. Oh, it's just, yeah. it's just getting things to be quicker. I didn't see that. It's so handy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And what's great too, so I can do, so and then also because I have some of the PDRs, which right, use the, the micro, micro yeah. SD, so same thing. But oh, that's great. Yeah, so it was just, it's like those little things that I really take pride in is just, yeah. you know, it's simplifying and streamlining, but then it also just makes my life easier because at the end of the day, I'm not hunting for a card reader to plug into my laptop yeah. to download, you know, the files or whatever, you know, I may need to do this just everything is just right in front of me ready to go and then yeah you gotta have a speaker so we can take a headphone oh, break oh yeah <laughs> while taking a headphone break it's great it's awesome there's two it's both an a and a b input mm -hmm. um and yeah it's it's awesome it works perfect and the fact that it just takes up such a little Absolutely. footprint is really nice yeah there's so many little hidden things that i i'm noticing after staring at it for a while and <laughs> yeah. one of them is the keyboard below yeah. the cantor yeah. s i did not even notice that yeah yeah so keyboard <laughs> keyboard Right there, obviously, so I can change, you know, track names, uh, add in notes into the metadata, what have you. Yeah. What's also great, too, is because there are so many different configurations, I do have a Cantor M, which is the smaller mm -hmm. um, mixing interface, which I use for on my smaller cart when mm -hmm. I use my mini rig. Um, but 
if let's say I don't want to use these faders for mm -hmm. my additional, you know, channels of wireless, I could easily just pop the Cantor M down there. Oh, true. And, and have that just, you know, connect as well. So. Yeah. A hard sell to the guys at Encore. They did not want to make it so that all four sides were removable. They oh, were really? structural integrity. But I did manage to convince them. So on each side, these do come off, which allows oh. much easier access when troubleshooting or swapping something out. Yeah. The fact that I can easily reach, you know, whatever cable I need, double check, make sure th something didn't get unplugged. Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, yeah, I mean, it's honestly, it's for troubleshooting, but then it's also just for access when actually building the thing. That but yeah, but then so. these two, like little things like this, these bumpers are here uh, because this yeah. is the side that goes up against the wall in right. the truck. And so, because I don't want these to just be, all of this stuff to be yeah, rubbing like up against. up and everything. Exactly. I mean, you know, I've broken a chinda hook because really? it just got smashed up against Ooh. the side of a, and it just literally just cracked the, the metal because it was just smashed up against the side of a truck. Right. Um, and so that's what these are for. Just stop gap. Everything is now protected. There's that little bit of an air gap. Um, so when it's ratcheted up against a wall, yeah. More things have probably been broken just in transporting yeah. than an, an actual onset use, yeah. I feel like, just based on anecdotal stories from other people. But yeah, it just feels like that's where accidents happen. Ratchet right. straps fail, yeah. you know, people wheel are familiar falls off. with the gear, how to yeah. load it, how to secure Drivers it. Drivers going 80 miles an yeah, hour, exactly. you know, over a bumpy road or whatever <laughs> it is. I mean, yeah, you got to think about those things because yeah. it's it's got to work when it lands and it's got to get there yeah, somehow. Absolutely. So yeah. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. this is not going to go to every location. Right. I am not going to hoist this up a right. mountain if we're shooting in a cave, you know. Yeah. Or, I mean, but, you know, beach, th like, these wheels are removable, could put, you know, um, the sand wheels on yeah. there, so it could it can oh, roll great. on a beach. I mean, there are, but this certainly is more of a, you know, is a stage-friendly or a location where, you know, you have a stake bed or something to get you into location right. versus a hand carry or down a mountain, up a mountain, that kind yeah. of a thing. Yes, this would not be the cart I would bring. But I have an option. I have other options. It's not yeah. like this is the only rig that I use. Well, it's just that this would be the main one. I didn't think you were going to show me anything after this that I was going to love more, but mm -hmm. I was wrong. Your yeah. your standing cart. I'm, yeah. I'm so Stand excited mode. to get to that. Yes. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. What do you think, shall we? Should we jump to it? Yeah. yeah. So um, this thing, yes. this is special. Yes. I love this. I've never seen anything <laughs> like this before. Well, I have to say, I am not the originator. I did not come up with this concept. Um, I would say the guy who's probably the most famous for it is Ed Tice, who's another mm. production sound mixer. He's worked on a lot of uh, uh, Stanley Kubrick's movies. Yeah. So an older, you know, legendary kind of a guy. He, to my knowledge, he was kind of the, the pioneer of this of this stand rig that yeah. he uses an X3, he uses a Cantar. Mm -hmm. um, currently, his current setup is an X3 with a Cantor M and everything is mounted on a quick release plate that goes on top of a stand. Wow. His stand, I believe he had custom made, um, but same thing, mm -hmm. it's got an antenna mast, yeah. um, he, his you know, wires, everything is locked into that one thing and then it's just a yeah. completely movable, you know. But yeah, to me, this is great. This is, um, it's a Brett plate, yep. is what everything's saying, much well, between two Brett this plates. This part was pretty customized, right? The bag is remember. made by Proto Gear, which is a Canadian company, and they've made a lot of bags for Cantar users, because yeah. Cantars don't really, yeah, it's, a weird it's not really an off-the-shelf yeah, bag, <laughs> exactly. So so they do custom custom bags mm -hmm. uh, for Cantar, and for and for other, they also have made mm -hmm. bags for, you know, Zach's Common Sound Devices products as well. But, uh, but this was, you know, mini, because it's lighter weight, mm -hmm. and most likely the, I know it's less channels, less track count, but when I've been in those situations, I haven't needed the full 24 right, track right. count that the X3 offers. This has been more than enough. Um, so with its 12. So yeah, so I've got, you know, eight channels of wireless. I've got, you know, I mix using the A box, which gives me, you know, actual, um, uh, you know, rotary knobs to be right, able to do yep. for, for gain. And then I've got my faders. So that's my ability to mix. And then it's got, you know, IFB transmitter. It's got a Comtech transmitter. Mm -hmm. I've got a talkback system, same oh, right, talkback yeah. system that I use in my main cart for my guys. The same private line talkback mm -hmm. is there as well. Um, it can take, it's, I've got a quick cable that was made so I can easily do time code oh, in or awesome. out. Because if we're ever jumping from starting the day, let's say on the big cart, and yeah. now we got to go do a quick scene and it's right. jumping into a car or whatever, go. I can jam it to the main master Definitely. clock on the cart. We don't have to worry about re jamming slates and locket boxes That's and whatnot. So useful. So, um, and then yeah, runs can run fully off battery. Can also be plugged into the wall. Um, but yeah, this is, yeah, I, just, this I was, love the ability to stand and mix. It's not even something mm -hmm. that I've thought about. Yeah, really yeah. I mean, this. it's it, the fact that it's it takes up so much less space. You, can, I mean, Euro carts, and even I have a the the DCTRM cart that Devendra designed and made. Right. I have one of those carts yeah. as well. But uh, 
even sometimes that is, is too big of a footprint depending on yeah. the location you're going to. This keeps the footprint really small but without sacrificing any of the equipment you need to get the job done. Yeah. Uh, and so I've been, I've been very happy with it. It's been great just to have this like Super lightweight, and what's great, you know, it is on a quick release plate. Right, so, so I can you pop could it off, take it in a car, or put something. it in a process yeah. trailer. I could wear it. Like it does actually, I can clip it into a harness. I Have can you wear done it. That? I mean, I've as of since it's being built, I haven't had yeah, one of those, but, it's but an I've option. done shows, oh. even full yeah. narrative, where it's a walk and talk. That's like a mile, just something yeah. where the range of the wireless you need to actually physically right. be walking. Easy enough to pop this on and do that. There's very little. Patience, I think that that productions have because cameras are so versatile now. You can jump in a, in the back of a pass van with you know a lens case and their yeah. camera and you, you know and be ready to yeah. go. Hey, we're gonna go shoot this down the down the road before the sun sets. Right. If I have to load up onto a steak bed, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna land, miss that sunset. Possibly power things. Exactly. I mean, at that point, yeah. there's just there's no patience for that. Which right. and understandably so. If if camera can adapt and be quick on their feet then we also need to do the same I thing. Agree. And this allows me to, at a moment's notice, be ready to go. The, the wires in here perfectly match the first eight channels of wires oh. in there as well. So we don't even have to repack or remike anyone. It's you know, the amazing. two, you know, the booms and the first channels of wireless are all identical. Right. Same channel for the ComTech transmitter, same channel for the IFB. Everything's dialed in for talkback. So it is a seamless you know, switch from one to the other. Yeah. Does everyone need to show up with two identical rigs on a set? Like, no. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of mixers <laughs> don't have doubles totally. or don't don't operate on yeah. the thought of having, whether it be the bag rig and the main cart or whatever your two right. setups are. But, but I like where you're you going sure, but you, thought, sh you, you know? sure look good to a producer yeah. when they're like, hey, we're actually just going to go jump in a pass. And he's like, yeah. yep, already on it, ready to go. Perfect. And they're like, oh, so you don't need to bring your cart. Nope, we're good. Don't need anything from Transpo. We're ready to go. I mean, there's <laughs> that truly looks good to producers. Yeah, seriously. So yeah. All yeah. right. So here we are yes. in the beautiful follow cart. The follow cart. Yes. <laughs> I love this because of its length. I mean, I usually they're a little bit wider this way, but this one you just have so much space and I love this feature. I was actually yep. setting up here earlier. This was so much fun to have this space to work. You have it lit beautifully. Your batteries are right here. This box specifically was designed to hold uh, Comtech headphones yeah. because headphones are bulky. They yep. take up a lot of space. I, for years, was really frustrated with how much drawer space it took up. Because mm -hmm. let's say, even if you only own 10 Comtechs, I mean, I own 21 Comtechs, but yeah. you own 10 Comtechs, you need minimally 10 pairs of headphones. Exactly. That is a lot of wasted space <laughs> yeah. in a drawer, I feel. So my thought was always, what can I do so that I'm not wasting precious drawer yeah. space, but tossing them in a bag and hanging it, it on the side. Looks weird. Now yeah. you're you're hurriedly trying to pull one out, the cables are all jumbled yeah. together, you know, um, so my thought was we'll hang them. Yeah. And so I designed this nice bar in So here. exactly so I designed this just like literally drew it on a on a scrap of paper, but it's just one solid metal bar, so the headphones literally just just drop and hang right there. Cables yeah. are right at the bottom. The whole thing is removable oh. so it can easily pop off if let's say i need to shorten the cart on the truck like maybe the, the cart's a little too right. long to fit it on on the truck wall or whatever pop that on this top thing or pops something. off cool yeah. what else do we have i, I like i just want to get into all these the, I'm i mean so the goal with this cart it's big mm -hmm. it certainly is bigger than my last one i think it's probably bigger than a lot of other people's the thought was we don't always get to park our trailer or truck close to set. Maybe mm. we're sharing with the camera department and then in that case it is totally. close. But if our trailer is back at base camp and we need to grab a specific piece of gear or a cable or I need an adapter, yeah. to send my utility on a run to go back to the truck to grab things, yeah, it was just, just wanting to minimize wasted. exactly wanting totally. to minimize having to go to the truck. So I decided to go slightly bigger to be able to fit more. Yeah. It's, I mean, for sure, it is It is a bigger cart, yeah. it is a heavier cart, you don't know but what you're it's, less trips. it's yeah. less trips to the truck. This thing was shipped to Hawaii and Thailand, lived in Thailand. We actually got a van that we worked out of that they had just taken the seats out of. Mm -hmm. I have a ramp, like a six foot long like folding ramp that I also brought with me to Thailand. <laughs> really? Ramp on the back of the van, we rolled this thing wow. in and out of a, an actual van, like a sprinter type yeah. van, not a, like a pass van that they just took the seats out of, right. and it was fine. So. It's, it, it, it may look like, like it's it, I know it condition. looks like a beast, but it is actually slightly more, you know, like it, it's, it's, it's manageable. It's yeah. ma more manageable than maybe it, it looks, but oh, yeah. That's great. But 
And I love just, how yeah, you have your, space. your batteries and your power strip up here. It's just everything is so yep. easy yeah. to find, you yeah. know? And everything's, you know, fully Velcroed down. Everything's pretty secure. I've never had anything fall off even over rough terrain. Obviously, That's if it nice. goes in a stake bed, I have covers that just go oh, right great. over and that, like, you know, cinch tight around it yeah. to protect everything. So two full-size milk crates and then one half-size milk crate. Uh, so, yeah, so you can pull them out. You can work out of them just like this, or you can fully pull them out yeah. to access whatever. So it's that's great. Not, so it's like a drawer, but the, you know, this kind of removable. So that's the C-stand legs so that we can it remote, in there you know. so perfectly. That's I crazy. Know. These are it's like finding the right, like looking at all the different like <laughs> so C-stand legs that exist for like the perfect, <laughs> yeah. And then this one's just Zeppelin's, mm -hmm. um, Softies, mic foam, as well as flex arms. So like right. for plant rig uh, kind of situations awesome. and then Lots of time down below down yeah everything and everything is in you know its own bag that is labeled you'll notice i love me some oh, labels you got a label yeah i mean i'm fortunate i have a, a group of people that i love to work with booms and utilities but also people jump onto different shows and maybe it's been yeah. six months or a year before I've worked with a specific person. I don't want someone to come up to this cart and have to constantly be like, hey, where's the, right, where's exactly. the, can you, what, just <laughs> label everything and That's that way great. you know where everything goes. You can find anything really easily. So if I do work with someone new or even just in general, if someone just right. forgets for a second, it's very easy to, to find things. So I'm a big fan of literally you label got to. Everything. I totally yeah. agree with Even you. Even the label maker gets a shout out for <laughs> which one it's in. So. There the it most, is. The most important part the of brother. the kit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Yes. I see some Ursa straps in oh, there. That's also, great. I, love I was going to say there. Ursa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also Ursa. Yes. Yep. <laughs> All organized by, by type. So pouches, ankle, thigh, waist. Gotta make cool. sure. So you got some Joe sticky stuff. Yep, this is all the the, the extras. Yep, yeah, because even Thanks. this this box up here is kind of the go-to with all of the like miking stuff, yeah. and then just additional rolls of stuff, additional uh, all the you sticky know. things yep, in one place. Exactly, and then <laughs> all the types of P-touch tape you can imagine. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then these are, and then I think I'm just using these are container store just dividers that oh, are in nice. there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Ooh, so that's here we go. The wireless. Look how beautiful. Yep. Does it, what does it say? MacGyver. MacGyver. That's my label that's on everything. Really? That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because most people oh know my God, because of this. Oh, my God, I didn't this. notice yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is why it's that same font. Let's see. This, let's get a shot of that. Look at yeah. that. You'll notice this is just pick and pluck foam, mm -hmm. which is you can buy from Pelican. You can oh, just yeah. get sheets of it. The thing is, I even even within the past, like, six months, like, added, you know, six more channels of, of mm -hmm. wireless. And so the like the configuration that I had for the foam mm -hmm. has to change when new gear gets yeah. added and because I don't necessarily feel 100% confident that I own every piece of gear that I'm going to own. So doing the the My Case Builder or the laser cut foam yeah. for me, I don't think would be cost effective because I know that I'm going to be making additions or changes. Uh, but yeah, that's even for this store, for all my mics, same thing. Beautiful, look at this. Because you know, when I first started putting this together, it, you know, I didn't have all of the exact same microphones that I have now, but it's easy enough to add, because there was room. It was yeah. like, oh, okay, I started with just 50s, then I bought two Sheps. Mm -hmm. Instead of having to oh, do brand nice. new measurements and foam every time, this is just a, a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. The Sheps is kind of now my, my go-to for, um, for indoor sort of situations for closer range. Yeah. Um, it's kind of, that's my that's awesome. favorite. And I see a lot of then, different yeah. color mics. This is so mm -hmm. satisfying. We that got was also a lot of research on Amazon, trying yeah. to find the perfect <laughs> size plastic case uh, to fit my mean. wires. We so. love a good box. Look yep. at that. That's yep. beautiful. The 6060 fits in there so nicely. Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, and I'm, I'm slowly making the transition to the 6060s. It was yeah. cost 11. You'll notice there's the most of those there. Um, slowly sort of transitioning. I've got four 6060s. We'll probably get two nice. more for the show that I'm starting soon, and then just slowly kind of transition them out. Yeah. Um, not that there's an issue with the cost 11s. I think they no, are great, a great but mic, but I I'm really happy with the sound I of the, of the 6060s. I love DPAs, too. I totally yeah. get you. And then yeah, even more, I've got the... The Ooh, uh, 4098s in yeah. there, which we love, love, love for yeah. cars. I've used those for music a lot. I've not used them for They're any location. Perfect in cars. Really? I love them. Love them in cars. Yeah, yeah. There is a there's a cub hiding under there oh, too. Oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, but that's that's the mic drawer, and then you get into yes. Oh my God, you have so many contacts. Contacts, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you yeah, yeah. never have enough contacts of these. Contacts and IFBs, especially yep. now. I mean, if we thought we needed a lot of contacts before, it's just gonna skyrocket. That's true. I mean, so. yeah, yeah. Especially if they're throwing people in, you know, watching streaming offset or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you're using Sunel amounts, I see. Yeah, there's a Sunel in there. I'll probably, I mean, pick up some more. But then, mm -hmm. yeah, also. Depending on the, the, I mean, some certain boom ups, you know, bring their own. It just depends. But yeah, as far as yeah. my collection, there's kind of like a little wide range yeah. based on what other people have fan. requested. Yeah. yeah. And then this is Ooh. another. Re I mean, this is this is because I have the space. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, TA three cables, TA five yeah. cables, every adapter, every, you'll every ever adapter. Need. <laughs> um, you know, spare things for my patch bay that's yeah. on the back. Um, What's nice is being able to carry all of this. Mm -hmm. This I think would normally be stuff that potentially would live in a in a crate or you know right. in some sort of a, a bin on a truck or yeah. whatever. So I can at a moment's notice if they're asking for music playback even when we weren't planning mm -hmm. for it and maybe it's you know Which always hey happens. can you tap into this you know front of house system <laughs> yeah. on this location that we're at you know yeah. just every kind of like audio right cables. cable so or adapter great. Y cables yep. you know shorties just all that kind of stuff. It's nice to be able to have that close by. Yeah. And then this is what Ooh. I just call the power drawer. So this yeah. is batteries, um, battery tester, you know, spare chargers, like chargers for the SSM batteries, you know, yeah. spare cube taps, things like that. Um, spare batteries for the slate. And then these are all just like different, you know, uh, power cables. So if I need to ever take an extra base station and plug it into an NP battery, you know, I'd have right. all those different yeah. cables and stuff ready to go. There's something yeah. on the back though. I don't know what that is. There's like a little you remember like my vacuum little... cleaner? Because I'm obsessive about is? cleaning. Oh yeah, oh there's God, like a vacuum cleaner. the choir with yeah. that, okay. <laughs> like my my utilities know, like th yep. this is to be kept clean. Oh yeah. That's also a great reason for this, this table this. that pulls out. Yeah. Because you're not going to eat food on this carpet. Mm -mm, that's, I know. I'm sorry if I'm a crazy person, but... <laughs> And it's fun. that's where it's ended up living. Um, normally it was on the truck, but then I think I worked with the utility who was cleaning. For it, though. This was another thing that Robert designed with me. It can hold either the umbrellas can sit in oh, there or, or carpets. Oh, okay. There's a spot for a boom over uh, there, here. but you can throw if if there's not yeah. an extra hand to move the carpet cart around, mm -hmm. but we still want to have let's say you know I can fit two right. carpets right yeah. there so that they're on the follow cart ready and it's to go. Held by that same hook system. Mm -hmm. Same system thing. It lifts off. It's removable, yeah. so we can move it. If we're not using carpets, we don't need that. that can easily become a row of, of cable hooks in the yep, back rather totally. than that. It can change, it's sort of modular, so which is wonderful. nice. Yeah. This black bag that's in here, that's mm -hmm. the dead battery bag. Oh, I'm very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one's quite it's, full. I think I need to <laughs> test them. I need to go through them. Those leftovers from what we just finished. But, uh, I and then yeah, it. just cleaning supplies, yeah. scissors, prepared extra for everything. Stuff. Yep, yep, up top. Totally. Brush. Yep. This was a Bill Kaplan idea, although Tommy Giordano, his longtime utility, may take credit for that and may be mad at me for saying this is a bill <laughs> idea. But uh, he had a plastic case on yeah. the top of his follow cart with batteries ready to go. All the batteries that we get are either in plastic for the 9 volts or they're in a cardboard box in another cardboard box. Right. And you, the last thing you want to be dealing with when you've got actors yeah, lining up to get it, wired opening and opening. is exactly. Yeah. So this is these are all fresh, Beautiful. but they're already ready to go. If someone, you know, props comes over, hey, can we get a double A for a clock in a scene? Yeah. Just help yourself. They're on the top yep. of the cart. They Super don't need easy. to go through anything. Yeah. yeah, it's just ready to go. Oh, that's the other, the color coding. That... That Eva. I noticed. That was yeah. an Eva thing that really? I borrowed. She did it on my last follow cart and I copied it over. Because it, when you're in a hurry, even though, yes, there's labels, when yeah. you're in a hurry and you can't, you don't want to be like, wait, which, oh yeah. no, it was the next you one. Can you know where you're doing that. Color. So it was yellow is for Comtex. Mm. So anything Comtex related, that's a quick one you need. Yep. Wireless transmitters is another quick one. Yep. Time and then code time code. Blue. Yeah, so it was just, it was just color coding it so that at a glance, it's even nice too, because even in the time of COVID, people will come up to me. Mm -hmm. Both, you know, we've got two booms out on set, so I don't necessarily have a person over at my cart, and I've got mm -hmm. someone, at, oh, hey, can I, get a, can I get a pair of contacts? And right. they're calling pictures up. I don't have time to stand up from the cart and go right, through it. Like, I just yellow glance drawer. over and go, yellow drawer. <laughs> exactly. And, and people, oh, like it's just, it's That's quick, great. it's immediate. So it's just those little things that yeah. I think make it just a little bit easier on set. All right, guys, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us, Amanda. Of course. This yeah, is yeah. so much fun. Mm -hmm looking through all of your cart, all of your, your follow cart, your drawers, your standing cart, which is still my favorite. Oh, there's Mark, your dog. You gotta bring him in for a little bit. I love that dog. <laughs> but guys, stick around. We have something coming up with Amanda. We're gonna chat a little bit more about her career and a couple films she worked on. Hey there, thanks again for watching this Ursa exclusive. If you have any questions about Amanda's kit, please go ahead and drop them in the comments. And also be sure to hit subscribe so you can stay updated on all of our content like our next video when we talk to Amanda about her work on two great films, 
Ladybird, and 20th Century Women. <laughs>